Good morning and welcome to our service today on this 13th Sunday after Trinity and the service day comes from Little Church of Little Badminton. In my sermon I'm going to be reflecting on the words of St James in the first lesson about um, how important it is to live our faith and not just believe, um, to actually live it out. And uh, I'm going to be reflecting on the pandemic and how we have been able to live out our faith uh, in, in certain ways and, and not in others. So let us begin our service this morning. Rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts, we have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant him, most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter Live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers, to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins, he pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent, and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please in which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto 
lesson is from James 1, 17 to the end. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of his first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass." For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain." Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fearless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Here ends the first lesson. Psalm 89 verses 20 to 37. Thou speakest same time in visions unto thy saints, and saidst, I have laid help upon one that is mighty, I have exalted one chosen out of the people, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him, my hand shall hold him fast, and my arm shall strengthen him, the enemy shall not be able to do him violence. 
the son of wickedness shall not hurt him. I will smite down his foes upon his face, and plague them that hate him. My truth also and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his dominion also in the sea, and his right hand in the floods. He shall call me, Thou art my Father, my God and my strong salvation, and I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep him for evermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure for ever. and his throne as the days of heaven. But if his children forsake my law, and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, I will visit their offences with the rod and their sin with scourges. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him. nor suffer my truth to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. I have sworn once by my holiness that I will not fail David. His seed shall endure for ever, and his seat is like as the sun before me. He shall stand fast for evermore as the moon. and as the faithful witness in heaven, but thou hast abhorred and forsaken thine anointed, and art displeased at him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. The second lesson is Matthew 5, 1-12. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Here ends the second lesson.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of thy name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of thy great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless Charles, Prince of Wales, Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall, William, Duke of Cambridge, and all the royal family. Endue them with thy Holy Spirit, enrich them with thy heavenly grace, prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, Send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.
Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. May I speak in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are now in the 18th month since the world went into lockdown from the pandemic. And whilst we were all told to separate ourselves from each other and to hide away avoiding contamination and further spreading of the virus, we have now had a good few months, thanks to the vaccine, that we have been able to see each other again. As a pastor and a Christian, it has been a time of tension, because as we heard from the letter of St James, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Well, we were all keeping ourselves unspotted at a very literal level. We were helping to reduce the numbers of deaths from COVID by keeping ourselves unspotted. And this was something we were told to do, to keep away from each other. It was even illegal to gather together, if you remember. It was also illegal to hold services of worship at one point. The churches in November of last year launched a legal challenge to the ban on communal worship. The restrictions, they argued, breached Article 9 of the Convention of Human Rights, which protects the freedom to worship. It was unsuccessful, but some tiers were allowed to form Christmas bubbles, and we were able to offer a service with strict pre-planned seating. And by April this year, we were gathering for worship legally again so long as we kept within our risk assessments. We have all had to make sacrifices to help with the international battle with this virus. And some people have died without seeing their loved ones. Isolation has caused mental welfare issues for many young people particularly. And some older people have been affected very badly by being shut off from their families and friends. And yet, people were able to look after neighbours in need. There was a huge move towards compassion in our society, a greater appreciation of our neighbour and his or her needs. If we were unable to visit grandparents, then the older pensioner living next door was someone who we could check on and be a lifeline for. Perhaps this was where the call to love our neighbour was in all this little ways and things that made a difference to someone nearby. And when we stood on our doorsteps clapping the NHS workers who daily put their lives on the line to care for the sick, we must remember the great sacrifice and selfless compassion that they demonstrated. So we should celebrate the kindness shown, the compassion given and received in our communities. There is much good that has come out of this horrid pandemic. Hopefully a greater love of our fellow neighbour is one of them. In his book, Alive to God, Timothy Radcliffe tells the story of St Martin de Père Poré, who was a 17th century Dominican lay brother in Lima, Peru, born of a noble Spanish father and an indigenous mother. He treated the sick with herbal medicines, but most importantly, he brought them into the priory much to the irritation of some of his brethren. The prior commanded Martin to stop filling the cloister with sick people. One day he found a leper in Martin's bed. You have disobeyed me, the prior told poor St Martin, who replied rather meekly, but father, surely compassion is more important than obedience. Well, it was Martin who was canonised, not the prior. Our presence with the sick is a sign that even when people feel most alone, God is still there. In his book, The Contemplative Minister, Ian Cowley tells how Sue Langdon, who is a priest living alone in a remote village of West Dorset, and is a highly sought after spiritual guide and companion to many people, often says to the groups that she leads, if you remember only three words from this day, 
These are the words that are supremely important. Compassion, compassion and compassion. You can forget everything else that we have said as long as you remember this. I think we can all say Amen to that. It is not, however, only in the great act of mercy that people have done, that people have shown strength and Christian love, but also in the holding back, the, the natural desire to worship, the natural desire to be with others, the natural desire to worship even. I believe that this restraint has also been a sign of God's love. It has been a recognition that it is important to avoid putting your congregation's health at risk than to insist on the priority of physical worship. And the springing into life of online worship was a way of saying we can grow in the love of God in other ways, even if separated like the hermits of old. Nothing will stop us from loving and celebrating God and one another, not even by being apart. So today, as we hear those words of St James and the Beatitudes of our Lord, let us give thanks to God for his goodness, for our love of God, for his love of us, and for the compassion that many have shown in different ways over the last 18 months. Amen. Those of you who have contributed to uh, the crowdfunding site to help this service, to imagine you're putting your gift in this plate. All things come from thee, and of thine own do we give thee, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And let us now pray for God's blessing upon our own lives, and upon the lives of those we love, 
and those for whom we have prayed today. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Thank you.